Hi and welcome to the accompanying video of my blog post on how to use Apache Kafka to transform a batch pipeline into a real-time one. Basically, this video will show you how to run all the examples, the output you should expect, you know, the problem you're trying to solve, uh, and then once you've viewed the video, really you can try to understand exactly the nitty-gritty nitty details around how things were implemented and just go through the blog post, okay? So, lots of things to see, but I wanted to just give you a quick overview. So number one is what we do. So I have a few courses on Udemy, as you may know, and these courses have uh, some statistics, such as the average rating, the total number of ratings, and the total number of students. And so these statistics basically do not get updated in real time. They do get updated every 24 hours, at least for the rating part. And basically, people post reviews, okay? And when people post reviews, these reviews take about 24 hours to appear uh, on the course page. And that's due to many things, but one of them is spam detection. And I think their algorithm for spam detection at Udemy runs every 24 hours. So really, I'm a Kafka guy and I teach Kafka. And I really want to say, how can I use Apache Kafka to really show, maybe they don't want it, but how can I show how to transform this batch pipeline into a real-time one so to compute um, the course uh, average rating and and so on okay all of that in real time but for all their courses has a stream of reviews okay so by the way if you want to look at these courses um, definitely check out the links in the blog post um, the links are right here okay so that's that's about it for the problem statement it's pretty easy now I want to show you my personal assumptions around how these course statistics are computed right now at Udemy these assumptions may be wrong, but this is just for illustrative purposes. So they must have a rest endpoint for their website on which they post reviews, okay? And basically when they have a post, they have a new table, uh, a new reviews table in their database that received the new reviews. And some things happen, we'll see what happens. But then at the very, very end, they have the core statistics in the bottom and all time, you know, or recent reviews, uh, core statistics. And there's a rest endpoint to basically pull these statistics and display them on the website. Okay. So fairly easy process. So what I think happens when you get new reviews is that first of all, there is a fraud detection job that runs every 24 hours. They will go ahead and pull all these new reviews. After doing some kind of algorithms or machine learning, it will go ahead and append the fraudulent reviews to a fraudulent review tables and all the new valid reviews to a valid reviews table. Okay. So basically this application that runs every 24 hours is what impacts our real time pipeline and really is what makes sure that um, how to separate fraudulent from valid reviews. Finally, these valid reviews will be pulled by a statistics job that will go ahead and compute statistics for all time in recent 90 days. Okay. And that job will run after a fraud job. So realistically, this is a long running job as well and is scheduled right after the fraud job, which explains also the delays. This will push updates to the course statistics table and then eventually the user will be able to view the course statistics. So fairly easy, right? So how do we move from this more batch oriented process into a real time one using Apache Kafka? So the endpoint is exactly the same. We post reviews and we get reviews and we have a PostgreSQL uh, stable uh, database at the end. So how do we use Kafka to get there? First, we're going to build one microservice, which is a Kafka producer. And the Kafka producer will take reviews from this endpoint and post them into a reviews topic in real time. Okay, so that's a fairly standard pattern in Kafka to get reviews in real time into Apache Kafka. Then we'll have a second microservice, which is a Kafka streams application, and that will do fraud detection. It will use a dummy machine learning model to detect whether or not a review is fraud. And then it will output all the results in real time to the fraud topic or the valid reviews topic. It will be the third microservice, which will be the statistics application that will pull all the, uh, all the reviews in real time from the valid reviews topic and basically do some computations to output both all time statistics and recent statistics for a review stream, okay? Finally, we need to expose this data into PostgreSQL. And for this, we'll use a fourth microservice using Kafka Connect JDBC Sync, which is created by Confluence. 
And basically with this, you can pull any topic data and put it right away into a SQL database. So very convenient, okay? So that's the scope of everything we're going to build. You can look at the details of how everything is built from within the source code or within the blog post. In this video, I'm just gonna show you what happens when we run this. So by the way, all the source code is available on the GitHub repository slash simple staff slash medium blog post Kafka Udemy. Okay, there's a link as well in the Medium article. So do uh, clone or download this repository on your computer and then open it with say IntelliJ. So here I am and I open my uh, basically code with IntelliJ. And now what I'm going to do is run everything. So for this, I included a run.sh, uh, which should run on most computers, okay? Especially if you have Mac or Linux. Uh, if you have Windows, you'll have a bit more to do, I guess. So the first thing I want to do is a Docker Compose up to basically uh, start our Postgres database. And that Postgres database is where we'll have the results being uh, sync at the end. Now we next, we want to start Kafka. So to start Kafka, I recommend you go to confluent.io slash download and download the open source 330 um, Apache Kafka uh, distribution by Confluent. And the reason I need you to do this is because they include this really nice Confluent CLI command. And if you do Confluent start, it will go ahead and start Kafka, Zookeeper, Schema Registry, etc., etc. So that's pretty awesome. So let me do this right here. I go ahead, and by the way, you need to include the binaries in your path, obviously, but then you do confluence. If I do, I'll just show you. If I do which confluence, you can see where it's downloaded. It's in confluence 330 bin confluence. So I do confluence start, and it's starting Zookeeper. And this command might take a while, but then you'll start Kafka, you'll start the REST proxy, the schema registry, etc., etc., and the connect cluster which is pretty awesome because it just does all the hard work for us. It's just one command and we can get started. So while everything starts, let me just keep on going. So once everything started, the first thing we want to do is create some topics for the demo. And creating topics is as easy as running the Kafka topics command. Uh, again, referencing Zookeeper, which is going to be a local host 2181 for everyone. Okay. All of our topics have three partitions. They could have more and replication factor of one because we only have one broker, okay? Um, the cool thing I wanna show you is that because we have three partitions, our process is entirely distributed and you could have 12, you know, if you need higher throughput or so on, but three should be enough for this example. So I'm going ahead and pasting these commands and it will go ahead and create all my topics that have been wanted. To verify that the topics have been created, we can do Kafka topics command, minus minus list, and then we reference Zookeeper being at localhost 2181. What we'll see is that all my topics that I've created are created, and there are some additional topics such as schema, consumer offset, connect, etc., etc., that were created by the confluence start command. Next, you need to build the entire um, project. And for this, I use MVN clean package, and you have to issue that command from the root okay, of your medium Kafka blog post or wherever you checked out the GitHub repository, okay? So you do MVN clean package, and what this will do is that it will build everything, all the projects one by one, so the producer, then the fraud, then the aggregator, and so on, okay? This is basically necessary before we do anything else. You could run the projects from IntelliJ, but this method is at least will be working for everyone. So what we'll do first is push some reviews in the producer. And for this, I'm going to start an Avro console consumer on the Udemy reviews topic. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll do it right here. So here we go. We have a topic, uh, an Avro console consumer, and we're reading from this topic. And as soon as we start pushing data, we'll see data coming in in real time. So to push data, fairly easy. We export a course ID, in which case this is my Kafka for beginners course. Links are in the blog post. I export the course ID, and then I just run uh, my jar, which is basically my producer jar. So if I go here to target, here is my Uber Udemy reviews producer uh, jar. Okay, so I go ahead and run this command, and this will go ahead and basically push 1,000 reviews, as we can see in real time. Um, so it's going really, really fast. 
It's pushing 1000 reviews, but still throttles. So we're at 150 into Kafka. But we can see it's actually being pushed because if you look at the Avro console consumer, it's actually displaying all these reviews streaming in real time. So pretty awesome. Right now, what we're doing is pulling all the reviews from this page, all of them. So all the 1078 ratings are going to be pulled into our Kafka um, Kafka server, Kafka broker. So this process can take about 20 seconds to run. And it's just because I throttled it. But if you were to just running at uh, max speed, it will take less than a second, obviously. Okay, so you can change the course ID and start pushing more stuff. But this is a demonstration of how to push, uh, how to use a producer to push data into Kafka. So that's for step one. Step two is we actually want to do our uh, Avro console consumer after our fraud detector application. So as you can see, if I just stop this one, we have processed 1078 messages, which is exactly the number of ratings I have at this time of recording the video. By the way, if you look at the, the reviews themselves, uh, you can see they have an ID, a title, a content, a rating, a creation date, and modification dates, a user, a course, and so on. So lots of good information that we need, but the most important one is obviously gonna be the rating. All right, so far so good. So now we're going to start a console consumer on the reviews valid topic, which is the topics that are not fraud, and also the fraud topic. And here we go. We started to Avro console consumer. Next, we need to launch our um, fraud detection uh, algorithm. So it's just a Kafka streams application and you can find the jar in target Uber Udemy reviews fraud one zero snapshots. So I'll just run it right here and it has started running. And as we can see, uh, the state transition was from rebalancing to running. And if you look now at my two Avro console consumer, that was really, really quick, but they both have data. Some reviews are fraud and some reviews are valid. So if I just stop now, I have 1,027 messages that are non-fraud and 51 messages that are fraud. Obviously they're all non-fraud, but I just made my algorithm say that some are fraud and some are not. Just to have about 95% here of the reviews non-fraud and 5% of the reviews being fraud. All right. Awesome. So we can just leave this application running and I'll just open a new terminal in the meantime. Next, we want to start a review, a review aggregator. And for this, we're going to start just two Kafka Avro console consumer on the recent stats topic and the long-term stats topic. The recent stats topic is where we'll put all the recent statistics computed over the last 90 days. And the long-term stats topic is where we'll put all the reviews all the stats since the inception of the course. So let's go ahead. Here is for the recent stats topic. And here is for the long-term stats topic. Excellent. Now I go ahead and launch my review aggregator app. Again, you can find the review aggregator in the target directory. And you can see the jar here has been built. So I go ahead and click it, press enter. And you can see that my Kafka Streams application has basically started. It went running and it's actually outputting me lots of log lines that shows that it's computing the, the average rating in real time. Uh, it's just me who, who chose to include these lines, but pretty cool. We can see that, for example, that's for the recent stuff. There were 470 count, uh, reviews counted and the average rating was 4.57 out of five. Pretty cool, right? If we look at our console consumers again, we can see that's here on the left hand side. This is the recent topic and we see that 470 message and number five stars is 276, et cetera, et cetera. And here on the right hand side, this is more of my global average. And as you can see, the count number of reviews is 1,027 uh, 1, and the average rating is 4.59. So slightly higher, 4.59 here all time and 4.57 um, recently for the past 90 days. So that's pretty cool. But all of these data are in a Kafka topic. And you may ask me, how do I sync this into your Postgres database? So that's a good question. For this, we'll use Kafka Connect. And Kafka Connect has a configuration. The configuration is right here. Basically, it says use the JDBC sync connector. You can connect to Postgres right here at this address, user user, the password, and the mode which is going to be upsert to insert or update values. 
and the topics we want are these two topics and that's about it and the primary key is going to be course id fairly easy right so for this you can actually use a very easy command called confluent load and then you name it the, the connector and you reference the connector file which is actually the easier way um, i really like their um, command line interface because it makes it really easy to load connectors so i go ahead copy this and paste it and now we can see that my uh, connector has started and how do we verify that the reviews have been sunk into postgres we can just open something like postico and using postico and basically opening my database i see that i have two new table recent stats and long-term stats if you go to long-term stats we see that we have 100 1027 reviews that's from my kafka for beginners course and we can see the average rating um all the way right here 4.59 and if you go to uh, recent stats we can see we have 470 reviews and the average rating is right here so that's pretty cool because that's the full end-to-end -end. now you can go ahead and play a little bit for example say you wanted to just uh, i don't know produce more data you could go ahead and export all these things and run this block of command what this will do is that it will fetch uh, reviews for more of my courses. So we have the Kafka Connect course, the Kafka Setup and Administration course, and the Kafka Streams course. And because my fraud application and my um, recent rating aggregation application are still running, and my Kafka Connector is still running, what we should see is that if we go to Postico and refresh, we can see that in real time, you can see the last one is actually updating. So we are at 58 reviews right here, counts five stars, 63 now. And then when the new producer starts, we go, there's a new line that happens right here and so on. So you can see that this table get filled in real time uh, just as I launched my new producers. So that was like a real time end to end pipeline. But think of like all the producers working for all the courses and everything happening in real time at production scales. That's awesome. In this table, we basically get everything updated in real time for long term stats and recent stats. Okay. So yeah, that's about it. Um, everything works really well. Um, obviously when you want to clean up, you can stop your producer, your consumers, and then you do confluence this destroy or confluence stop. If you want, don't want to lose data, I'll just do destroy. And then you'll stop connect, you'll stop everything and you're done. You just completely run the demo and basically play it with a end-to-end -end, um, pipeline. Now, if you really want to learn about this end to end pipeline, go check out the blog, read about it, and read the source code. Okay? All right. Happy learning, guys.